Here it is. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very pleased with the opportunity to welcome all of you on behalf of the Leva Michelad Foundation. I express my gratitude for being with us today at this round table discussion. We all know the challenges of the security of uh, the South Caucasian and the West regions are many more. But we have never been so worried since that <coughs> occurring today around touches very fundamentals of the shaping of the future of the galaxy region. Uh, the region which has just recently ceased to be a zone of bitter confrontation and started turning into the regional cooperation. Given these issues, the Leon Michelot Foundation begins a series of discussions on the methods of regional security, prospects for cooperation in the light of emerging challenges and uh, change in strategic context. And today we have the first event of this series. So I wish to all of you for two discussions and good luck to all of you in the let me first uh, uh, give the floor to the State Minister on European and EU Atlantic integration, Mr. Kekuri, for the welcoming uh, address to the meeting, and then we will launch the uh, round table. Please. Thank you, thank you. Sir. Yeah, I you are uh, here, colleagues, excellencies, dear friends. Uh, it's uh, also for me a great pleasure and a great honor to welcome you, all of you today in the opening ceremony of the round table, evolving strategic context for security in the Black Sea region. Uh, I believe that uh, before I uh, go through my welcoming remarks, I must underline that these are the issues in which uh, Ambassador Levan Mikelazzo was personally very much involved uh, and has contributed a lot uh, to the uh, security in the region. And uh, of course, this is very, very important that we continue this dialogue uh, organized by the Levan Mikelazzo Foundation. I would like to take this opportunity to uh, express my uh, appreciation and sincere thanks uh, to the organizers, of course, for the organization which puts uh, its own lot of efforts in strengthening the expertise here in Georgia and in the wide region through education, research, facilitation of the dialogue between nations as well as various ethnic groups in order to meet the challenges of the 21st century. And it is always a delight to be invited by friends who never fail in delivering timely, human, thought-provoking discussions. It's very symbolic that we came here to talk about challenges we face in the Black Sea region because what matters for, the part, for this part of the world matters for the entire European security too. The Black Sea region is one of the main factors in the makeup of the security and stability in Europe. The presence of vast natural resources and strategic transport and energy corridors make it in an uh, extremely important and sensitive area. Over the last years, we have been registering very unfortunate and dangerous trends in our wider neighbors. Today, the regional threat perception is at its state. Six years after invading Georgia and subsequently occupying 20% of our country, Russia has annexed the territory of another, our strategic partner and neighbor, Ukraine. Medals in Ukraine southeast and is not likely to stop them by illegitimately grabbing bits of land from sovereign countries, Russia continues to neglect the international law 
and international legal norms eroding the very principles the modern security architecture is built upon. It's up with the, its occupation of Georgian regions, illegal annexation of Crimea, and aggressive destabilization of the rest of Ukraine. Russia continues creating alarmingly dangerous developments and at the very moment steps up its campaign on our front as well, trying to de jure annex Abkhazia, and now as we see Ossetia, South Ossetia, in other region. The aggression against Georgia and Ukraine is a challenge for the Black Sea region and the entire Europe because it raises the fundamental question as to whether independent states are free to exercise their right to choose their own future. What we need today is regaining confidence in existing security institutions. We need to strengthen them instead of inventing new architectures intended to once again divide Europe and world in spheres of influence. Zero-sum thinking is a relic of Cold War which doesn't fit in today's globalized and in the interdependent world. Investment in future Black Sea region more democratic and secure is the answer to challenges we face today because security is not an exclusive good and cannot be achieved at cost of others. Demonstration of strength and result doesn't inevitably mean willingness to confront, but rather determination to bring about peace and security. Concluding, let me warmly welcome you again and say, pay any price, bear any burden, meet any hardship, support any friend, Oppose and inform to ensure the survival and success of liberty. John Peter Ken. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. State Minister. I think uh, of the, this very encouraging uh, uh, start. We have uh, to launch the discussion. Let me just briefly, very briefly, uh, share with you some thoughts uh, we have uh, worked out in the foundation in order to just uh, keep the main, main, main direction uh, to our to today in the joint work. First, uh, on the content uh, of, the, of today, uh, all, all the issues of the discussion today. First, in Georgia, both uh, the expert community as well as the uh, entire public uh, sees the development in Ukraine as a kind of continuation of the tragic events taking place in uh, Georgia uh, back in 2008. And these uh, ties are um, uh, quite strong and vivid, uh, although denied by the Russian Federation, but uh, we all know that uh, these are elements of the same very complicated development, which is a post Soviet transformation of this huge, huge territory after the end of the Cold War. That is why what's going in Ukraine is not just a regional event for us, and just uh, the problem of neighbors, strategic uh, partner, and uh, all these uh, brothers. But as a matter, we are both jointly involved in the life gets up involved in this, in this development in this way. Second, this is uh, the uh, unfortunately quite bitter truth that preventing Ukraine only completely the war spheres we had last several years. Security conditions within the space we live currently together is just degrading. And nobody knows to, to what uh, extent this negative trend will continue. Definitely, we all have yet to fully realize that after the March, first of March, when the upper chamber of Russian Poland, 
in favor of military intervention in Ukraine really mean a different or totally different war. It still needs to be determined what kind of war we need, what are its characteristics, and what are the rules already in place, and what are those what may appear in the future. Who are the, I would say, uh, setting these rules and who are prompting us the framework of our activities? Um, all in all, we can uh, summarize what is going on now in this vast region of Black Sea, Caspian, I would say. This put it lead in this way uh, very shortly that uh, uncertainty has grown up immensely the last several, several months. And now, one of the, I would say, immediate functions of all those who are making policies, analyzing for policies, setting the condition <coughs> of the countries, nations, and so on, is to clarify what is going on there. We have to do it. What is it? main task This is why uh, our foundation uh, has decided to, to set, this, uh, set up these uh, discussions and this is the first uh, of this, of this, uh, set of the, uh, our activities. Very shortly about format and product of the round table expected. First of all, uh, the round table is intended to stimulate ideas and discussions. It's not a forum to prepare any academic papers or something else. You don't expect to, have to work out some joint statement or something like that. Just to exchange views and to get more clear understanding what are the uh, modalities of the world we are in now and we are in the world. Uh, to stimulate the open dialogue, uh, we will work on check and out rules. You all know what does it mean, and uh, so be free, feel free to express your position, and so on, and so on. We have already asked some participants to, to describe and assess the challenge uh, from their the unique nation perspectives. And I'm very thankful that all of you agree with this, so we will have some uh, uh, starting up, I would say, uh, interventions uh, in order to facilitate uh, fruitful, fruitful discussions. So, let me uh, stop here. These are some, some general points. <coughs> we have no other rules or restrictions. Our flow is open, and let me uh, present an author of this uh, idea, by the way, my fellow colleague and friend, <coughs> diplomat, scientist, and uh, a man who is active in the, in the sphere of economic relationship between the United States and Georgia also. Uh, Mr. Mauro Pazzaretelli, who is president of this foundation, is uh, research director of uh, Central Asia Cosmos Institute in uh, Johns Hopkins University, and uh, he is also president of American Georgia Business Council. So, uh, I can assure you that these are not just titles and, uh, say, decoration for this man. <laughs> He's very active in all these fields and uh, <coughs> the idea to start uh, this series of discussion on these very burning matters you want to keep. So, on the please, thank you are the facilitator. Thank you. So, please start with the company, which is the teacher, and then uh, Thanks. Uh, Mr. Minister, for your introduction. Um, Mr. Uh, discussion is in the safe hands. Yeah. I was the Minister of Foreign Affairs when I was uh, at the Embassy in Washington, where I started to my career in the United States in 1994. Okay. First of all, it might 
great honor to be associated with the uh, Leon Mikhailov Foundation uh, for uh, both personal reasons as well as uh, professional reasons. And uh, I'm really, really, really grateful for, uh, for this opportunity to have all of you here in this room to discuss issues that are uh, so essential for our country and uh, for all of us. Uh, let me start with a few points before I uh, hand it over to our very distinguished speakers and, uh, and uh, experts of the, of the MED. Uh, first of all, uh, there are issues in, in this changing strategic environment that are uh, very clearly visible. Hard uh, conflicts uh, and military operations and the consequences of those operations are obviously visible. But there are also other issues sometimes hidden behind the uh, diplomatic statements and uh, some of the soft power activities that are also issues that needs to be discussed and needs to be uh, somehow uh, addressed. Uh, I will just say a few, maybe some of them sound provocative, but some of the ideas and thoughts that, in my view, uh, reflect this new, new reality and then uh, that hopefully will stimulate even more uh, our discussion and our speakers as well. So first of all, is what I would like to say is that uh, we are dealing with, the, uh, in, in this region, we are dealing with two sets of security arrangements or two organizational uh, structures. One is obviously NATO and there is a, a CSTO uh, uh, that, uh, that includes Armenia, Russia and other countries. And, uh, but there are four countries that do not, be, uh, do not belong to any of these uh, two military uh, organizations so far. And um, these are Ukraine, Moldova, uh, Georgia, and Azerbaijan. And uh, in a sense, they are hanging uh, in the in air in, the, in their security <coughs> arrangements, and they have no, uh, neither collective nor individual security guarantee that could um, help them to stand with a uh, major security threat for this region, which you all, you all know what it is. That's number one. Number two is that there is a limited appetite, as we all know, from um, Western countries, uh, including the United States, to uh, be guarantor or supporter of the uh, security of individual states in this region. While there is political support, uh, there is a limited or no military support um, countries of the region. So that's a reality that we are dealing with, that these countries need to deal with. Another one is that uh, you probably noticed that uh, uh, when President Obama uh, addressed the uh, issue of uh, increased assistance to countries affected with the new realities in the, in the region, he addressed uh, and, and some, some, uh, some non-military assistance were so, uh, issued and, and financial assistance to Moldova, Ukraine, and, uh, and Georgia, but not, not to Azerbaijan. Uh, and at the same time, when the Foreign Minister of Russia, uh, Lavrov, spoke in the UN session last month, he mentioned uh, that uh, he, one more time, uh, initiated this idea of the new security architecture uh, that Europe needs to move to. And uh, he mentioned, but at the same time, we need to find a solution to security of the uh, Ukraine, Georgia, and Moldova as well in his speech. Again, he didn't mention Azerbaijan, which is, in my view, an interesting fact. And we see that there are more limited um, um, collaboration or strengths of the collaboration between regional countries as well in, 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 the, in the new reality. All of them are trying to find solutions by themselves and less, we see less uh, collaboration between countries in dealing with the problems that they are facing. So I would say that these are the, uh, like some of the realities that, that emerged in the region in the last uh, few years, and maybe some, some of them in this month. And these are the issues somehow for us to probably think about, among all, all the others that will be, I'm sure, uh, named here. I will stop here, and I would like to ask now Rivian um, Khandrava, who represents now uh, National Security uh, Council, call it now. Uh, uh, start maybe discussion. I'd like to introduce some link to time. I'm trained in being a very strict moderator, so 
um, 10 minutes? Seven. 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 <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your compromise. <laughs> Uh, the year 2014 is notable for challenging the very basics of European security as a whole and of the Black Sea region in particular. Uh, Russian annexation of Crimea, the war in uh, the eastern Ukraine, and the creation of puppet state in Novo Russia, actual incorporation of Abkhazia into the Russian Federation, resulted in low illegal but de facto new borders occur to the Eastern Europe. Never since the collapse of the Soviet Union, stability and security in Europe looked so fragile. Never since the end of the Cold War, the Russia-West relations were so tense and the degree of alienation so big. And never since Francis Fukuyama published his book, The End of History and the Last Man, Russia's ideological attack against Europe has been so good. It looks like the West became too relaxed after the decades of confrontation with the Evil uh, Empire. It looks like West uh, European decision makers lost attention towards the messages coming from Kremlin, very clear and unequivocal, by the way, and afforded themselves to over-concentrate on internal issues. Even Russian aggression against Georgia in August 2008 and deployment of military bases in Abkhazia and South Ossetia failed to disrupt the self-confidence of the Western leaders. A few months later, after Russian invasion in Georgia, policy of reset was introduced and business as usual approach recommenced. Contrary to the situation we had 20-25 years ago, when Russian Bolshevism looked defeated forever, Russian empire disintegrated for good and Western liberal democracy triumphed finally, we now see Russian ideology transformed into so-called conservatism, which means nothing else but just anti-liberalism. We witness the postful efforts to restore Russian empire, now under the umbrella of the Eurasian Union, and helplessness for the European soft power vis-à-vis -vis aggressive Russian revisionism, or rather revolutionism. Well, Western sections will probably produce effect, maybe three or five or seven years later. But until this happens, countries like Georgia, Ukraine, and Moldova have simply to survive as independent states. Maybe militarily, economically, ideologically, ideologically Vladimir Putin will be really disarmed in mid-term or long-term period of time. But what may happen before to these three countries trying so hard, though maybe not too competently, not too wisely, not too brightly, to secure their, the right of their peoples to live in the way they want, but not in the way somebody in Kremlin wants them to. And this is precisely about the will uh, about the will and the right of the nations, be it Georgians, Ukrainians, Moldovans, or Crimean Tatars, the latter almost forgotten. As early as in 1994, Ukraine was given guarantees of sovereignty and territorial integrity by the US and United Kingdom. Could any guarantees look more valid than those given by the US and the UK? In 2008, Sarkozy Medvedev, his plan for Georgia, envisaged withdrawal of Russian troops to the pre-war locations. They are still here, and the Russian Abkhaz Treaty, so heatedly discussed both in Georgia and Abkhazia now, leads to the militarization of the Black Sea by Russia, where it already robbed the Ukraine of the port of Sevastopol. Mr. Sarkozy, by the way, was in 2008 the leader of the country residing in the EU. So what? Twenty years ago, at the NATO summit in, uh, in Prague, Georgia officially declared the will to join alliance. For 20 years already, we are told annually about significant progress we achieved on our way to NATO. Meantime, Georgian troops participated in NATO-led operations in Kosovo and Iran. Georgia became the largest non-NATO contributor to the operation in Afghanistan. 
Altogether, our relation with NATO is precisely the case where Georgia is not just a beneficiary, but a real contributor. My compatriots had great, maybe exaggerated, expectations of Bukharest summit. Then, on Chicago 1. This year, for the Wales summit. In 2016, the Bowen summit would take place, and if coming back with the next portion of promises, but without any tangible guarantees of security, Georgian government will have a hard time explaining its own public what the have is happening. Let us not forget that the parliamentary elections are to be held in Georgia in October of 2016. And for sure, Russia will be there, or rather here, by that time. We all probably remember the doctrine of Mr. Zhezinsky, so-called sanitary cordon around Russia. What we have now instead are Russian jumping off places inside territories of Georgia, Ukraine, and Moldova, meaning so-called frozen conflicts in Abkhazia, South Ossetia, Donetsk, Luhansk, Transnistria. The project of Novorossiya is far from completion. The issue of Transnistria is still on the table. Russian military bases in Abkhazia and South Ossetia, and in Armenia, by the way, are modernized and equipped with offensive armaments. Russian military budget will increase drastically for the next several years to come. Are Western economic uh, sanctions adequate response to this trend? And interestingly, I will note that neither Georgia nor Turkey have joined these sanctions. Thank you. Okay, some additional thoughts for us to, to discuss. Uh, now our next uh, speaker is uh, Mr. Aydin Cikel uh, from the Embassy of Turkey. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here on this distinguished community. And thank you again for inviting us to this roundtable. Uh, Unfortunately, my ambassador couldn't come here because he has been very busy these days. We had yesterday our national day reception. We had a jazz concert. We had his visit art musicians. So he's a bit tired these days. So, uh, without wasting my time sitting with us, uh, let me start. I will try to express our briefly our previous positions with regard to the recent developments uh, in that situation. But starting with the history, you know, uh, during the Cold War, there were only four countries around the Black Sea, and they were on the Soviet Union, Turkey, Romania, and Bulgaria. We were made in NATO and then we were all in Warsaw Pact, in opposing camps. We were allowed and the Black Sea was always was a source of concern, secret concern for us, always at that time. Then, you know, yeah, after the collapse of the Cold War and the collapse of the Warsaw Pact, we had very few countries all around the Black Sea and we were happy with this new development. And then we tried to promote cooperation in everything in this, <coughs> in this region. And we played a real, in this sense, we played a leading role in the establishment of the organization of Black Sea Cooperation Council. Then Black Sea for to promote security and defense cooperation. So we were not things going well for a while. But even at that time, there were problems persisting in the region, like the Council industry, like Transnistria, unfortunately. No, there were last two, no last two problems, there was no solution yet, still there is no solution to those problems. And even all the these 20 years, which more than 20 years, we support to show the territorial integrity of all countries in the region, including in in Georgia, Moldova, and other countries, and the uh, Euro Atlantic Association of those countries. Well, we were in NATO, we were at, you know, the, associated with the EU, those countries were not yet in the EU, but in the meantime, Romania and uh, Bulgaria joined the EU. So we, we, were, we supported all these developments. But now, recently in Ukraine and in the, in the, in the, several, in the last several years, we have witnessed uh, some grand uh, uh, developments, unfortunately, in the region, which, uh, which, is, which are not good for the cooperation in the region. And, uh, the, the elephants in Ukraine, the annexation of uh, Ukraine by uh, Russia uh, is, is unacceptable. 
uh, we don't recognize this at, at, at all. And uh, it's, it's a grand concern for us. Again, let's see, after 20 years, it's become a uh, source of concern in the sense for us. It could be secret concern. We are so optimistic for some years, uh, in the sense, but now it becomes security. Uh, we are concerned about the developers in the, in the black sea. In that sense, uh, the previous speaker uh, talked about the threat of Ukrainian terms and also concerned with the well-being of the Ukrainian terms and the future. And we are sharing all of our concerns. We are not very loud with perhaps, but we are sharing all of our concerns regarding this region with our Russian counterparts at every level. And I know that uh, our this time he was Prime Minister and our President, our President several times called President Putin and expressed our disappointment and uh, uh, disapproval regarding the, the Russian involvement in, in Ukraine and the Russian annexation of Crimea and the problems uh, concerning the, concern the total community in Crimea. Uh, and unfortunately, you know, the situation is there and you know nobody is able to stop Russia and uh, we should think how, what to do next. Uh, I think we should, uh, the West should be united and more outspoken against Russia, I, I think that is the first thing. But on the, is it, uh, on the other hand, we should have a, I think, closer dialogue with Russia. Uh, because without Russia, we, don't, we can't have a peace and settle. Huge country, it's a big country, and we cannot be schooled in any mechanism. Uh, Russia cannot be answered. So we have to talk to Russia. And recently we are observing that the EU has been talking more with Russia. So sanctions, yes, as you said, we are not we have not joint sanctions against Russia. Georgia within join. Of course, we know that we will join, but we have some reasons. We are very much dependent on Russian gas for our energy. I can tell you that we are dependent on Russian gas for 50% of our electricity needs. In that sense, we are more dependent on Russian gas or Russia than Georgia itself. Georgia is not dependent on Russia economically, but we are very much dependent. And I can tell you that immediately after the events of the Ukraine started, we had a delegation from our Ministry of Energy who visited Georgia to have talked about our, our energy needs and you know, to uh, promote more Turkish investments here in hydro power plants so that we can reduce our dependence on Russian gas and Russian energy and that we can import more electricity. First, of course, to increase the electricity output of uh, Georgia itself through Turkish investments, then import to Turkey. So we have uh, then the Russia, the army was here recently, Georgia was here, and the electric energy was in Turkey. So we have behind the scene, I can say, some of the negotiations to reduce <coughs> energy dependency of Russia. And in that regard, of course, there's a, uh, there's a this called uh, uh, regional projects like Bakken PPDC, Johan, and Bakken PPDC. And the pipelines, as well as gas pipelines, are very important. It can reduce, it already you know, saved uh, Georgia in terms of dependence on uh, uh, Russia. It is, but for us, we are only 7%. We are getting our uh, own, uh, gas supplies from this pipeline. Now, with the expansion of Chapter 2 project, so it will be expanded and we will have new pipelines on our attack. And there's a gas pipeline that will be expanded here, only with some Turkish, together with some Turkish companies and the rest of So in the similar years, we will be able to import more uh, gas from uh, Azerbaijan and the world, less dependent from, from, from Russia. Uh, so, in conclusion, uh, we are very much concerned with the markets in the Black Sea region. And uh, we share this, uh, our, our concerns with Russia. Even though uh, sometimes we are to make that they are not loud enough, they are not hard enough, but definitely we share our concerns with Russia. 
you're in chapter and all C equals in key final Russia's numbers, build, build, draw, and build, build, draw, commitments and complications. That's why the development of a solid and unified answer to Russia's scope to modern national security system is of high importance. <coughs> it remains critical to show solidarity of the world community and uh, in the face of Russia's barbaric behavior and to continue exerting political pressure and economic restrictions on Russia to stimulate and refute its unlawful and vicious policies. Sanctions imposed by our G7, EU and US partners are essential to counterattack Russia's volatile actions. Following this, Ukraine has recently adopted its sanctions policy as a strategy to uh, stop the expanding aggression. Dear guests, Ukraine kindly appreciates the existing level of international support and cooperation in backing our country and people in our faithful determination to succeed and counteract uh, the aggressions, its propaganda, its hybrid form, its new wave and new art of war, uh, its hybrid uh, form policy that is aimed to undermine our sovereignty and territorial integrity. Recent elections to the parliament of Ukraine proved our nation is adhered to its pro European, pro democratic, and pro Ukrainian. Positions. The government of Ukraine undertakes all necessary efforts and practical steps to counterattack military aggression of our northern neighbor. New parliamentary uh, and new coalition is about to be set soon, as there is no doubt it will be continued to chosen path towards deep and comprehensive reform in the political, economic, military, and social spheres. Of course. Much needs to be done to restore our economic competitiveness and to bring peace and stability to the eastern part, eastern part of Ukraine. We count on financial and technical support of our international partners and we are open for discussions on how to successfully recover Donetsk and Donetsk region. Such issues will be topical during the International Investments and Donor Conference scheduled to take place this December in Kyiv. Let me assure, assure you that uh, Ukraine is open to a pragmatic dialogue with the Russian Federation and we continue to urge Moscow to fully adhere to its commitments with the President Poroshenko's peace plan and uh, means arrangements and general agreements. Dear friends, uh, difficulties today should be not excuse for the failures in the future. Ukraine will stand its ground and will stand for its soil. Our nation had never been more united, our visions had never been clearer, and our readiness to preserve our identity and sovereignty had never been as strong as today. Thank you for being with us, because united with today's challenges, we will create instruments of preventing collapses in the future in this region. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Uh, I think uh, this uh, sets a kind of stage for our discussion. Uh, on the issues of new challenges and their implications to uh, the developments in the region. Now I'd like to set uh, kind of new rules, maybe have each speaker um, make a brief comments, two or three minutes, or questions, if you want to ask questions to any of the discussions here. Yes. Yeah, actually I have one question for you. And, uh, you mentioned that you and also Turkey have joined the sanctions. Is there any kind of uh, red line after which such joining may happen? Uh, is there any idea about what? And another question to the Turkey. You were speaking about agreeing to disagree. Are there any policies regarding what is happening uh, in the Black Sea region? Or is just sharing the opinion? Uh, and uh, how do you look at the future of what is happening in the Black Sea? For example, not the agreement, how, how uh, adequate it is for current situation. Or, uh, also, you mentioned the economic uh, sort of dependence on uh, Russia. As far as I know, this dependence on energy is growing. It's not being reduced. So uh, is that in line with what you said, or what would you say? Yes. Uh, well, I, I will respond in personal capacity. Yes. Sure, <laughs> sure. Definitely. Yes. Uh, from my point of view, we are uh, approaching this uh, Line because what's happening uh, regarding Abkhazia, the worst will happen 
regarding South Ossetia. Uh, this is precisely uh, the red line and we uh, have to demonstrate that we are not ready to swallow all that. You see. And probably whether this uh, is the step uh, directed on joining sanctions or any other, this uh, step should be done. Well, this uh, different positions and points uh, in Russia, first of all, yes, we have different positions and it was developed in Ukraine, of course, we support central military of Ukraine, we don't accept the annexation of Crimea, but as Turkey, what can we do? What did the West do? That's my question. Not, so we, we can't do anything. So it's not, not, not only the points we are losing with the Russia, but in Syria and other international uh, problems, we have serious disagreements with Russia. Not only about the uh, more recent developments and other international developments, as well, we have serious disagreements with Russia. But we share our views, they share their views, they are trying to get our support. We don't support them at least. This is where we tell them that we, we have this. There are uh, this, all these policies and actions wrong. And you know, we are uh, encouraging them to take a positive and more constructive you know, position. That's what we can do. Sanctions, usually Turkey doesn't join, doesn't apply sanctions unless they are uh, you know, approved by the United Nations Security Council. This is not our general policy. A long time, and with it is in Iraq and other countries, only the United Nations approves and the you know, we also join. Otherwise, we don't join the sanctions. Uh, this is our general. Uh, plus, of course, in this case, we have so much dependence on Russia. As I said, before, 50% of, of, of our electricity is we are dependent on Russian gas. If Russia stops supplying gas, we are in the dark. You know, we are all in the dark. So, so, uh, we, we can't risk this, we, unfortunately, and as you said, it is growing. So we are trying to reduce this dependence. You know, uh, yes, uh, we are trying. That's why you know, we are encouraging other uh, companies to invest more in the hydropower uh, sources of Georgia. Already, we have uh, more than uh, six, more than ten companies who are interested in uh, some are building. We see about the first big uh, hydropower that was happened about a month ago, so we are trying to reduce our dependence, but at this point we are very much dependent on Russian gas. Montreal, yes, is a uh, very important issue for us. Uh, this agreement, this treaty, is very important and very much relevant for the uh, security of, uh, in the Black Sea. We are for the maintenance of this agreement, not for uh, any changes. We know that we are uh, we have different views with uh, than our views and Western countries views, for example, the United States, maybe some other NATO allies, we have different positions. But this agreement you know, establishes a balance in the policy, a kind of balance, which was, you know, for decades, for decades work well. And it can still work well. It can still work. It balances the, the security concerns of some countries around the Black Sea and some security concerns of Turkey, not fully, by the way, not fully. We wish that there was no such an agreement. We wish that for them. this passage through the Black Sea has always been a problem for the first centuries, not now, for, you know, for maybe 200 years, more than 200 years. Of course, we want a free hand. No, no, our, we wish that our heads are not tied with any international agreement. But unfortunately, our heads, in terms of this passage, as for the, the passage of warships, our heads are tied uh, with this agreement. And we think that uh, it's, it's, it's working well. It's worked well during the Cold War, where we were, you know, this, with the Soviet Union, we were uh, adversaries with the Soviet Union. And now it can work. If we touch this agreement, I think that, uh, that we can might, we cannot uh, find a better replacement. Of course, if we have guaranteed that as Turkey, we will have a better replacement, okay, we can make some amendments. 
but we are not sure about that. So that's why we are at, at present for the uh, group people evaluation of this agreement, and the agreement has certain rules for worship, as you know. Has the trilateral agreement between uh, Russia, United Kingdom, and the United States proved in case of Ukraine? We cannot very much trust some of the agreements, unfortunately. So, uh, well, I would like uh, maybe to ask uh, participants to make a few comments on, uh, on the way you see some of the challenges emerging, whether your views agree with some of the comments that were made here, or you differ or you add some additional points in discussion. Maybe I'll ask you first. <laughs> That's a natural question. Yes. Um, yeah, we're in a, as you know, extremely difficult and complex situation that I don't have particularly high hopes for resolving anytime soon because I think Russia has chosen a, uh, a path of confrontation for whatever logical reasons they give that is not going to be, uh, we're not going to be able to solve. And uh, without a change of governance in Moscow. And, uh, and again, this is my personal opinion. And um, that we are going to have to have uh, strategic patience and resolve and the resolve on the issue of uh, limiting Russia's ability to do more damage outside of what they've done already, and um, short, short of war. And the, the conflict that uh, we are involved with is that, you know, the way Europe and NATO view our strategic and national security is diametrically opposed to the Russian view of the world. And there is no room for compromise on these two diametrically opposed views of international security in any particular territory. It's either one way or the other. The Russian view is their security is is uh, strengthened by having weak, dependent uh, states on their borders that they can influence, that, are, that uh, they can more or less control. And European security is based on the concept of having sovereign, independent, democratic states which are joined together based on a, a shared system of values and a mutual shared system uh, of view, how we view our national security and, and this is absolutely, uh, as far as the Russians are concerned, opposed to their security. Having a democratic sovereign state on their borders for them is a risk, particularly one like Georgia where a Russian citizen can travel to Georgia and is not asked for bribes, is not stopped every three or four blocks by a policeman. And the Russian citizens ask themselves, why, why can't we have this? You have made progress here, and you are developing a system here, which uh, the leadership in Moscow sees as diametrically opposed to their future as leaders in their countries. So the idea of compromising on this issue is not uh, on the agenda for Moscow. And uh, so this leaves us in a very difficult, complex situation. How do we stand secure and limit Moscow's ability to undermine their neighbors? And, um, and so far, we've had some limited success. And strategic patience is going to be required because Russia needs money to support this system that they've established. And uh, with oil prices going down, with 
gas going down, they will not be able to afford to maintain this very fragile political system which they have established. It is going to cost them billions to try to maintain what they've done in Crimea. It's going to cost them billions to try to maintain what they've done in eastern Ukraine, Abkhazia, South Ossetia. And internally, within Russia, the political loyalty is based on corruption, coercion, subversion. How do they maintain this system with, as they run out of money? And, uh, and the, the big, I think, the fear, I think, in should be concerned as Russia begins to struggle to hold their system together, they will become increasingly <coughs> aggressive against their neighbors. And uh, we, the leadership in the West needs to be prepared for this. And um, I, you know, I don't think I don't I don't have the wisdom to <coughs> have the decisions about what we can do to limit and to limit the damage they can do to their neighbors. But um, collectively, I hope we can come up with better solutions than we have now. Thank you, actually. Uh, and probably you know, some of you at least know that uh, in the last 24 hours, several um, the Russian bombers were detected in the Black Sea area as well as the Baltic Sea area. And uh, NATO flights actually following them. And uh, they are in international uh, airspace, but they are close to NATO borders as well. So I think, uh, at least my view is that uh, growing security threat, and, and you are absolutely right, weaker Russia is, more unpredictable, it may become outside of its current borders. And we, sh we probably should expect some unpredictable moves in the areas that we uh, do not expect those moves today. Not in, not in Georgia only or Ukraine or maybe Transnistria, but beyond that, and maybe in some of the areas that Russians have not shown there. Uh, major presence yet. So, but only way to stop them is, I think it's a, it's hard power security deterrent. Uh, that's again my most personal, and I I assume my institutional view as well. At least my my um, uh, all the organizations I work with they share this view with me. That's that's nice to work with the people that, uh, and uh, authorities that share your view. So. I think security deterrent, far security deterrent, is the only thing that can stop Russia. And I think this opens, on one hand, it's a, we all describe a very great picture here, obviously, because the picture is pretty great. But at the same time, it opens new opportunities for countries to realign its, uh, themselves in a way that, that could resist with this type of increased pressure on, on, on Russia. And, uh, but hard security should be the instrument. I think my personal view now in this case, Turkey uh, obviously has significant uh, dependence on energy and, and uh, also trade and other, other issues, a lot to lose, obviously. But in theory, this growing Russian threat may damage Turkish economic interests even more if this trend continues uh, down the road. That's a kind of something that people will need to think about. And uh, maybe one, one last comment on my side at least of this issue is that uh, there were times when Russians knew there, was, there were red lines for them. That they crossed those red lines, some of the forces, including probably militants, uh, would have some kind of response to those actions. Today they know that there is no such red line. That's why they act the way they act. And I think that's very important for at least uh, those who deal with this issue from the Western side in the security uh, organizations, but not obviously everything comes from the individual states. And we know that uh, policy depends on, on, uh, on the states, the uh, members of NATO in this case, and uh, other countries to come up with a solution. Sorry, well, I, but I hopefully I didn't uh, use my power <coughs> very much. So. But I would like others to comment, please. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Georg Goksad, the executive director of the Levan Mikhailov Foundation. Um, uh, indeed, I mean, uh, Russia still uh, has a 
a big joker in uh, its hand. It's a uh, natural gas and oil. And just our dear speaker from Turkey mentioned about the dependence of Turkey on Russian natural gas. Uh, maybe uh, uh, Iranian gas uh, is a solution. And I'm wondering, uh, we all know what is the, what the situation is quite complicated and countries like the United States, Israel, some European countries oppose an idea to lift an embargo on, uh, on Iran. Now, what's the position of Turkey? Does we work towards that issue to get some natural gas from Iran? Yes, uh, I think it's a yeah. issue. Yes, yes first start with this. Uh, our first uh, supply is Russia, <coughs> then comes Iran, then uh, Azerbaijan, then Algeria. So Russia is by far the first supply for us for the petrol, oil, and gas. Iran comes second maybe 30% or even less, as I mentioned, just 7%. Mm -hmm. So, and in the Iran, in terms of our gas deals with Iran, we were so much under pressure from the United States. Remember those things about 10 years ago, where we were, we were in the pipeline, we were under pressure not to bring this pipeline and not to conclude on such an agreement and join the uh, sanctions, U.S. sanctions, Western sanctions against Iran, not to have any economic, uh, you know, this uh, serious activities and then such deals with Iran. But as, as I told you, no, we are not uh, uh, applying this unilateral uh, sanctions against any country. We didn't listen to the word of this because the sanctions against it at that time, but still some of them at, at, at that time were not you know, approved by the UN Security Council. So we continued with this deal because we want to we want to diversify our sources of energy. Uh, but today, you know, because of our differences uh, regarding Syria, we have serious problems with Iran as well. We, we can't depend on Iran energy. So we have two uh, sources of gas, Russia, we have concerns. Iran, we have differences about Iraq, we have different views about Syria, we have different views. So we are we live in a very difficult neighborhood, like Georgia yourself, you know. So you have to balance all of those things. But this is very important for us. And uh, this about this uh, the other thing is uh, of course concrete things. Yes, you know our hands are not fully free, but still we are trying to give you our messages and not subtly to Russia, we have tried. For example, this year for the first time, we had a uh, 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 three countries, Turkey, Georgia, and uh, Azerbaijan, and uh, for the first time, two meet, uh, uh, meetings of ministers of defense in Azerbaijan. First in Brussels, and then on the largest of NATO meeting, then in the Nachtiba, in last June in, uh, in, uh, in Azerbaijan, Nachtiba. And last week only, after 13 years, we had our chief of military staff visiting uh, Georgia. And the message, you know, there was a message in it that, you know, this is our strategic, strategic ally. Uh, we attach uh, very much importance to our defense and military cooperation with Georgia. We you know that how all these meetings and uh, bilateral visits pursued by neighboring countries. We are away, and that's the point. We want to give such messages. These are messages. I think it's very important because uh, by heading to 2016, uh, the Hong Kong nation, I think Turkey could, Turkey could play, play a very significant role in leading Georgia into NATO membership because I think Turkey may have a very decisive voice in that process if Turkey decides to become a leader, a champion of this. This issue. At least from my perspective, I see this as a as a very very significant significant uh, contribution in the process. Uh, I think we started a little late, so I take five minutes from your coffee break time to uh, have a little bit no of uh, join. I, I think uh, we have a few comments coming from our friends from France as well. Hello. 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 I know that uh, 
France, it is sometimes perceived at the end of Russia, and, uh, but uh, it's, uh, it's not always understood. But uh, uh, I think that, uh, first of all, uh, we, we have to speak with, uh, with Russia, and uh, I think that uh, France, but also Germany, or others, uh, had a very important talk to, with Putin uh, and uh, in 2008, even if we couldn't uh, stop completely the Russia, uh, the Sarkozy was very active to, to try to, to deter Russia to go, to go further. And uh, well, we, are, we are also trying uh, well, yes, uh, no order and for instance to put drones in Ukraine or in the Black Sea. We had a, a lot of French uh, boats uh, this, uh, this summer and even now we have one boat and uh, Russia doesn't like it at all. And, uh, well, uh, uh, our president is also trying to, to do something for the conflict in Armenia and Azerbaijan, as you know. And I propose that we must hear uh, some kind of union between the taxi, the and the around Russia, and not only around 
Baltic countries, for even Netherlands was affected by uh, Russian sanctions. So this job is part of your business. This risk is part of your business. The door is open, but you have to take uh, this risk on yourself. Of course, Georgia State will try to support you if trouble comes, but it's up to you. If you see that there is a risk, and this is uh, 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 a risky endeavor for yourself, don't do that. Uh, but nevertheless, when we see that part of our business and are still interested in even increasing the activity in Russia. So, so this is not a, a, as simple as it, it uh, appears to be. Uh, well, again, if uh, European Union or our Western partners come to some new stage of uh, policy and a new strategy of sanctions against Russia, then we will have to work out our position as well. But for the time being, I don't see any contradiction in our behavior and the Western policy is a reaction. But there are discussions on reducing sanctions and so on. So we have to follow this uh, uh, process and see how the situation will evolve. I don't think that uh, Georgia's sanctions were a great part of Russia. Any la last comment? Thank you very much. Thank you. Any last comment? Yes, just a uh, couple of words. Uh, I would say very brief remarks being <coughs> uh, caused by the uh, element of statement of a French colleague about uh, French and uh, particularly for Europe, different European countries policies to be understood well and correctly. I agree with you, yes. Uh, given the realities of particularities, I would say, of the Russian relationship is uh, each EU member or European <coughs> country or other Western countries, there might be from many reasons why but the, the policies for deterring uh, Russia's aggressions are not that active, I would say. So, so it, it can be, could be explained. But the problem is not why um, any particular country is not doing or is doing something. It's about the concern in Georgia society is about uh, ability of the of the uh, West of the country, or the Western community to work out clearly, swiftly enough, join consolidated position, put it forward. And then strongly defend it with uh, the Russia. Not to allow Russia to, I would say, uh, split the counterpart. This is traditional Russian policy. We all know that. This is, I think, the, one of the one of the, if not the main. One of the problems is how the Western respond to Russia's policies suffers from. And here I would, uh, as far as we have uh, time limits and we have already exhausted our time uh, resources for the first city, I would just propose to continue uh, some uh, exchange of views on this also. How the Western respond? Might be or could be shaped up. What we are talking about? Is there any illusion that uh, any president or any leader of a Western country, if one of these uh, personalities takes phone and uh, makes call to Mr. Putin, will it stop uh, and will it be now to stop Russia? Definitely. No one, at least, uh, at the 
this round table, uh, there is such a illusion. But if uh, there is uh, no way out, we have to confess in that case. I don't believe it, uh, that this is the case, that uh, we are, I would say, helpless. And Russia is literally allowed to do what it would do. Uh, does it work? So, what sort of strategies uh, we all have? Definitely, first of all, our Western allies and partners and friends, the strategic partners, first of all, should uh, work out and then, I would say, put in place uh, in this very, very, very uncertain situation. Let's try to sub elaborate all these points also. Thank you. Thank you and let's... Uh, okay. oh, sure, sure, sure. Uh, sorry. And I think uh, from Ukraine you mentioned a very uh, important notion of uh, unity and solidarity. Probably, you see. We all are uh, very much concerned that Putin successfully exploits uh, contradictions which exist uh, inside the West. Look at his last uh, speech in Baldai when he targeted the United States, but not the EU. So he tries to somehow play on these contradictions between EU and the United States on one hand, within the EU, EU on the other, and so on. So uh, what we really need, this is unity and uh, solidarity, but at least we need unity and solidarity between, let's say, Georgia, Ukraine, and Moldova which are almost in the same position. So this is why I think uh, the day before yesterday, the President of Georgia voiced the initiative of close cooperation between these three, which may be a good addition to already existing Turkey, Georgia, Azerbaijan uh, format, which is working and summits are on, and the next year, the next summit will be held to see. This may give opportunity at least these three countries which are directly under the uh, Russian uh, well, uh, pressure, uh, annexation, military attacks and so on, at least to talk in the one voice in the international organizations to somehow coordinate their activities, their appeals and so on and so on. This may work, though we have example of one which failed. But this way it may work is if there is a strong unified support from the Western countries. Thank you. Is the partnership umbrella? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Three most countries. We cannot leave Azerbaijan out of this. We should not. So this is very important that Azerbaijan somehow attached to this new 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 kind of policy and strategies. I think we should break. Okay, and then we'll continue in about 10 minutes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 
important in general is this unpredictability of the situation in the region, which uh, I think our previous chairman has mentioned. And uh, especially in case of uh, several players, and Russia is not a but also as you heard, with Turkey it's not very clear what, uh, what the way is going on, because there are so many problems with Syria, contradictions, coincidences with others. Uh, if there are some problems in the uh, European Union, again, not very clear how, to, how, how much the solidarity and unity could be developed uh, to trust nations over it. We know that, for example, uh, Hungary is quite a, has some different opinion on Slovakia regarding the sanctions or some other actions. We know that uh, Mr. Orban is a good friend of both Putin and Saakashvili, which is an interesting uh, sort of paradox and some other things. So in this situation, I think it would be very important to understand where Georgia stands, and especially in terms of this part of integration. So I my pleasure to uh, ask the Deputy Minister for Integration to speak, Mr. Mandela. Please, Thank you very much. I understand the question. Uh, I think 10 minutes, because 7 minutes was just a, a, a cheating okay. class, nobody speaks that. Thank you. Before you uh, uh, start your talk, I would uh, like to say a few words. Uh, thank you, organizers, for this event, the Government of the Foundation, for uh, putting this event together and for inviting me and the opportunity to speak about Georgian view on, uh, on, this, uh, on this subject. Uh, Leva Mihela was uh, our friend, my personal friend, he was my university mate, uh, geographic institute mate, uh, and he was the first from our geographical brotherhood uh, who joined foreign service, and he personally inspired me and many others uh, to, to change our geographic position to the diplomatic one, and I'm uh, very grateful to him. And we are missing him today, not only we, but uh, his friend, but Country is yeah, uh, country is and the new society is Mata, and Elavis Medivy, and those here at this uh, today. So, thank you very much. Now we can go ahead. Before uh, coming uh, to this event, I checked my. Uh, all the paper, personal archive, and I found out that uh, 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 back in 2006, uh, 2007, when I was a political director in the I have participated in uh, many uh, seminars, conferences, and events in the political Black Sea and the Black Sea Black Sea uh, uh, Only uh, uh, and uh, a lot of uh, new ideas, new initiatives uh, uh, were coming at that period, uh, like the uh, Lexi Forum, Romanian Initiative, Lexi Synergy, Gate, Communication, uh, Cities, uh, Community, Democratic Choice, Lexi, Eurovision, uh, many, many others. Probably it was a golden period for, uh, for uh, Lexi, it was kind of a big forum. Uh, and uh, it's not surprising because uh, in, uh, it was a period when Romania and Bulgaria uh, uh, succeeded, uh, completed their uh, uh, democratic transformation and joined the uh, EU and NATO structures. Turkish negotiations with the EU were in uh, active phase and uh, 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 those and armed uh, origin revolutions uh, brought uh, uh, younger reforms uh, in uh, Georgia and in the Ukraine. So, all of it, we are happy, all of it, we are uh, uh, respecting optimistic and uh, bright future. And I found a phrase in one of my old speeches that I delivered in 2007 at one conference that all the developments which I have already mentioned are changing the face of the region, I'm talking from my old speech. Yeah, they are, they are having a positive effect on our security and stability and they foretell a bright future for the, uh, for the Black Sea. I wrote it not because I was uh, 10 years younger, but uh, 8 years younger, but the, the situation, the overall situation was more, uh, more optimistic. But this enthusiasm unfortunately faded uh, shortly. 
And uh, now we see that the Lithuanians are frequently uh, having a danger, uh, dramatic uh, danger. The relatives are up to big in our uh, region. In 2008, we were liberated by Russia, and subsequently, but to the, to the more precise, 18% of the territory was uh, occupied. And in recent days, the situation has been more deteriorating even more. Uh, in Abkhazia and probably the same will be in South Ossetia. Crimea uh, is annexed by Russia. They battle uh, and Russian troops to meddle in southeast of Ukraine and, uh, <coughs> and it's not likely that they will uh, they, uh, they, uh, they, they will stop uh, they, they will stop the flow of stability of the Black Sea region as we well see is geopartized and the future of democracy and stability and security in our region are in a, in, in a serious, in a serious uh, danger. And what is Russia doing? Russia neglects the international law and all international uh, legal norms uh, and eroding the very principle on which uh, uh, all peace is, uh, is built on the rapport. And it seems to me that all, uh, the whole uh, achievements of the last quarter of the uh, 20th century, like, uh, SSB process, process, end of Cold War, uh, democratic transition of Eastern European countries, first uh, post Cold War, uh, NATO enlargement, uh, all this uh, did not mean the end of all uh, wars. In fact, 21st century started exactly like 20th century with conflicts and wars. And if in previous century the ground zero was Balkans, now the ground zero is uh, uh, the main stage of this uh, unfortunate development of uh, Black Sea is a, is a <coughs> Black Sea region. And like uh, in Balkan case, uh, Balkan security was, uh, was decided for European security and European countries did their, uh, their utmost to preserve uh, democratic development and stability and security there. Likewise, security of uh, the Black Sea region is essential for entire European security. Without uh, Black Sea integrating, stable, uh, prosperous, uh, and integrating into the uh, European space, there will be no lasting, uh, no lasting uh, peace, uh, <laughs> peace in Europe. Uh, the indivisibility of the concept of uh, uh, security together with the new nature of uh, threats uh, requires uh, every responsible uh, member of the democratic community. Every uh, international organiza organization concerned and uh, like-minded nations to play their, uh, their role and to contribute uh, to, their, uh, to their own uh, in, uh, in uh, promoting the stability and security. There is no single uh, nation or, or, or organization that <coughs> is able to effectively cope with uh, current, uh, current challenges. <coughs> so, what uh, should we and should the uh, international community do in uh, our part of the world in the Black Sea region? Uh, first, uh, it, uh, my mind, to my mind, comes uh, uh, to ensure uh, energy security and uh, economic. Uh, From uh, your agenda, your first panel was entirely, not entirely, partially, was uh, dedicated to this uh, particular topic, so I will skip it. Second is promotion of democracy and, uh, and rule of law, and here the uh, main role goes to the, to the European Union. Uh, fortunately, not all countries in the region fall under Russian pressure, under Russian intimidation, uh, occupation, invasion. And uh, Georgia, uh, Ukraine, uh, Moldova are still on uh, EU track and, uh, and are doing their best to, uh, to, to integrate uh, more uh, politically into European structures to develop free trade and visa free issues with the European Union. Uh, and uh, I should admit that uh, uh, in Brussels uh, they uh, realized that when it comes to security of our region, time really, uh, really matters. <coughs> and uh, uh, for Georgia, for instance, uh, uh, this uh, process of uh, signature uh, of 
preparation and the signature of association agreement and the CFTA proceeded with unprecedented uh, speed, 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 unprecedented for the new speed matters. And I hope that we will, uh, we will manage to maintain this age of uh, cooperation and uh, in a same speedy manner we will uh, achieve our uh, other goal. The next on our agenda is visa liberalization. I don't know, maybe my minister already uh, told you that yesterday we officially closed the first uh, uh, phase of uh, visa liberalization negotiations. Uh, and uh, now we are in a second phase. Actually, we started the implementation of certain elements of second phase already from uh, early summer, but officially in the first phase, uh, the winter phase was uh, closed uh, yesterday, and now we are in implementation, second implementation phase. And by our most optimistic prognosis, uh, we might be able to go final to. Uh, to, to Finish this uh, to conclude this uh, negotiation by uh, Eastern Partnership Leader Summit uh, by me uh, next, next year. And uh, if everything goes smoothly, from 2016, we might have a uh, visa free regime with the European Union. And second on our agenda is, um, is European perspective. And uh, you will agree with me that in Baltic, uh, in both in Balkan, uh, in Balkan case, European perspective was uh, the main uh, is the main incentive, the main tool that the European Union used to persuade these countries to adhere to a democratic principle. The same perspective should be given to those countries in our region. And first and foremost, I have in mind Moldova and Ukraine to give us uh, to give us uh, this European perspective. And, also, we, we hope that uh, Turkey will, uh, will, I don't know how to say, it, uh, restart or uh, reboost. Or, uh, but uh, uh, Turkey's uh, progress, Turkey's accession to the, to, for, to the European Union will be great help for, 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 for our country, of course. But there will be no democracy and uh, prosperity without uh, physical security. And here, uh, NATO, NATO so should have its uh, role. Yes, uh, we understand uh, that uh, the current environment does not, is not favorable for its uh, enlargement, uh, especially as they the to the east. But uh, even in this situation, it is important for, this, uh, for the alliance to come up with new creative uh, approaches. Uh, to ensure peace and uh, security in our part of the world, in NATO's, uh, in NATO's vicinity. And probably it's time for uh, this organization to start thinking beyond uh, Article 5, um, Article 5 uh, uh, paradigm. But one is clear, ally should act uh, decisively and correctively and guided by strategic, uh, strategic vision of ensuring Europe all free and, uh, free and uh, secure. And despite uh, all these challenges, there still is uh, room for uh, region, for uh, further promotion of uh, regional cooperation and especially cross-border cooperation. Uh, it's not my forte, but to the best of my knowledge, uh, work uh, uh, on your work is uh, going on. Uh, there are uh, new ideas, new initiatives uh, to uh, host. Uh, uh, meeting of uh, of uh, relevant EU committee on this particular this this particular subject. So uh, so we know what to do. And uh, if um, every as I already mentioned, every country and every organization responsible will do its uh, own job, will make this part of the world more secure and more prosperous. Thank you again. This dark background. I think that was optimistic about what we have heard. Thank you very much, and then we have another representative of the country that is now NATO member, and let's see a sort of a visual state, Bulgaria, and pleased to offer uh, to uh, our good friend Marin Lesensky. Uh, to, uh, thank you very much, Georgi. Uh, I want to first thank uh, the host from the development of the foundation uh, for having me here, and also the Bulgarian embassy. Assistance uh, being brought here. 
Uh, having said that, I want to say that I'm speaking in my personal capacity, not in the capacity of my organization uh, or my country. Uh, so, uh, you know, what is the first thing when, uh, the first thing when you're buying a house? So, usually the real estate agent tells you it's location, location, location. So even if you buy a nice house, you can remember it, it's bad, so it's not uh, worth it. Okay. So that's why I think it's very important for each of our countries to have a good, and, uh, stable and prosperous neighborhood. And obviously we don't have such. What's on the house? Yeah. So. Uh, and so <laughs> the house is not worth very much if it's, if it's the case. So, uh, that's why we, 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 we at the point where things have gone from uh, bad to worse. And uh, obviously the, the situation is such that uh, we have to think uh, what we are going to do next and in order to, 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 to step back from the other side and uh, uh, bring uh, stability uh, in, in, in the region in order to achieve uh, the prosperity and democracy that uh, our country for that. Um, I'm going to speak uh, from, from the viewpoint of Bulgaria, which is um, meaning from a, what uh, a small to medium sized country which is located in the Black Sea region can do about it. First, uh, Bulgaria has uh, three venues for action here. Uh, the first venue for action is uh, acting on the upper level. Um, the second one is on regional cooperation level. The third one is acting within clubs uh, membership. This means as a member of NATO and the European Union. Uh, and uh, of course, as a small to medium sized country, Bulgaria is the most um, meaningful way of contributing because, of course, acting for the membership for the clubs and so NATO and the European Union. Uh, because currently the regional cooperation. Venues uh, are shambles. Uh, I don't have to mention that uh, uh, the multilateral forms like the uh, Plexi form uh, is not working, uh, even based on partnership, uh, uh, it's not uh, working. We uh, uh, it's, it's not working properly, so we obviously have to find a way to devise some ways of uh, cooperating in the region. Um, in terms of uh, clubs membership, uh, I want to, to, to underline one thing. We spoke about uh, what is preventing us from acting in solidarity in action. I think uh, this is the vulnerability of other countries to, 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 to pressure. And what Bulgaria have done in recent months is to assess the vulnerabilities and to propose uh, how to address them. Uh, when, and with the assumption that when the, these vulnerabilities are reduced, then the level of differences uh, is reduced and we can act in for our solidarity. Uh, I want to say, uh, to quote a document that was uh, adopted by the um, uh, Bulgarian government uh, just before um, the World Summit. Uh, yeah. The NATO, uh, saying that uh, uh, the conflicts uh, in the Black Sea and the Caucasus uh, region uh, ensure on the illegal uh, annexation of uh, the Crimea by Russia and the conflict in eastern Ukraine are the most serious threats of uh, peace and security in uh, Europe after the Second World War. Um, and uh, that um, these uh, developments have uh, negative uh, influence on the security of Bulgaria itself. So, Bulgaria identified uh, uh, the following uh, challenges that need to be addressed. These are first um, uh, the increased threats from uh, conventional military capabilities in the region, the Black Sea region, the Republic, and the hybrid model of warfare. And hybrid, especially pertaining to the information warfare, which is both uh, political and economic means, which is uh, 
uh, in reducing distortions in society and politics in the country. Uh, you know, this is very much valid in many other countries in Ukraine, uh, in Georgia, in Moldova, uh, in Western Europe. Uh, so, uh, the, other, um, the other threat of the force is energy uh, dependence. Um, as we probably know, we know Bulgaria's very dependent on Russia, especially in gas and metal percent dependent on imports of gas. Luckily, we don't hear lots of dependent on electricity production, we don't have to go to And oil and gas are rather dependent on the market of imports. So, what are the solutions? Uh, that Bulgaria proposes in this uh, document very briefly. Uh, the first one is uh, that uh, as part of the, uh, the NATO and uh, the European Union, Bulgaria proposes to get to put its things in order uh, in defense planning and equipment, meaning that it should uh, cut its dependence on Russian weapons and maintenance. It means modernization uh, and uh, of uh, weapon systems and uh, compatibility with NATO systems. Because it's can be some number of um, NATO already 10 years and there will be many things on the, in the pipeline uh, like uh, provision of new fighter jets because they are very nice going on uh, all the needs. Um, but this has to happen, upgrade of the NATO capabilities, uh, upgrade of the army capabilities, uh, increasing the defense budget. Obviously, the defense budget was cut uh, because of the review of the economic crisis. So, the new targets are 1.5% up for next year and 2%, which is the NATO target, the year of the target in 2020. And uh, most of these things are very conceivable in the long and mid term and uh, as I said all these things have been known, discussed, uh, but with Russia's actions in Ukraine um, has and now it uh, it's moves uh, in, in, in again in Georgia and Kazi, a wake up call for the European countries to accelerate uh, the plans. So hopefully Bulgaria will achieve this um, new procurement and uh, reduce its uh, dependency on the Russian government. Uh, it will also in these terms uh, it will procure probably um, you know, new labels uh, 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 should add defenses. Uh, it's another very uh, topic which is very, very very much pertinent also to, 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 to Georgia and other countries. It's uh, investment in cyber security, which is also just a long COVID and should be done. Uh, also, in terms of energy security, but it is now dependent on 90% uh, it's, it's very small production. But uh, um, now it's working for several years, and uh, I hope it will again uh, this will be a wake up call to finish several. Um, plans for, for, for uh, alternative pipelines to every countries like uh, Romania, uh, Greece and Turkey. And uh, starting from uh, Romania and Greece, these are relatively small uh, projects now that will be used in an emergency situation also. But uh, with Greece and uh, Turkey, we rely very much on the new pipelines that have come up that are going to be built in the future. Uh, so um, this means also coming to, to South Team. Uh, there have been a lot of talks whether Bulgaria will join South Team or not. And I think uh, uh, the, political, the political consensus is very much uh, that uh, South Team will not be built uh, unless there is uh, a repair decision about it. The European Union should decide about it because there were many vulnerabilities in uh, found in the tenders about the projects. Um, 
And also, uh, I was happy to see that we did a little bit pub public poll about this, and uh, the Moldovan public is also very much in favor of building uh, South Team only if the European Union is unanimous about this, uh, which means if there's no unanimous the decisions that go, uh, to happen. Uh, so, uh, I'm ending up with, with this, so uh, we, we have to do more to reduce uh, our country's uh, vulnerabilities in order to, do, to increase the chances for solidarity. And then we should go to the drawing board and decide what we are going to do about uh, the Bagasidian cooperation project that we had seven years ago, but we can, but now it's not functioning. Uh, we, and also we have to see what we are going to do about uh, uh, the environment of both NATO and the uh, George now spoke about uh, the prospects of uh, joining NATO. Uh, I wish it would like and uh, just you know, one remark about uh, uh, the logic of the, the European Union I listened to. Uh, we recently discussed and talked about the development of the European Union. Uh, so, as you probably know, uh, the new Commission has merged uh, the, 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 the two spheres, the, the, the development portfolio with the neighborhood portfolio. So, um, uh, on the downside, it means that uh, it can get less attention to, 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 to the less resources to spend on it. But, uh, on the, Up, uh, upside meaning that uh, merging enlargement and neighborhood portfolio means that the neighborhood portfolio will be upgraded uh, as a status and uh, there will be more chances to produce a couple of candidates to start to be Thank you very much. And now I have the honor to give the word to Thank you. Thank you. Another black senator, and then his excellency, Mr. Munoto. Thank you. 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 Thank Thank you. 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 Uh, since she uh, said it here in uh, this uh, uh, event uh, about the so-called new strategic realities, uh, the realities uh, which uh, can be created by one country uh, and uh, with uh, gross and uh, blatant violation of the international law. Uh, It's uh, in our view a matter of course that countries of the region which are striving for democratic development and cooperation for stability and security among them my country, Romania, are trying to confine and prevent further deterioration of the situation to contribute to finding solutions to the existing and really emerging problems. Uh, I uh, make a uh, uh, few points uh, uh, about uh, uh, main options and concrete actions which are being uh, undertaken by Romania in this complex context. And uh, I should uh, 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 follow. Uh, Romania uh, is determined to make full use of the opportunities of NATO and the EU membership. Uh, in this context, uh, we are trying uh, to formulate uh, ideas, uh, to make suggestions as uh, a country with a really, really uh, concept about the, uh, the situation in uh, uh, our region, and uh, based all, also on uh, our uh, historical experience with the uh, uh, interaction with the uh, Russian Federation, Russian Empire, uh, USSR, and uh, uh, now Russian Federation. 
another uh, uh, direction of uh, our uh, activity uh, uh, concerned the, the strengthening of bilateral relations with uh, like, uh, the like-minded countries of the uh, wider Black Sea region and Europe. Uh, also, uh, we are uh, promoting uh, regional cooperation and uh, in the framework of this cooperation, uh, the realization of important infrastructure and, and energy projects uh, to connect South Caucasus and uh, Central Asia to European and uh, world markets. Uh, I mean, uh, between other the ferry lines between the Romanian port, Constanza and the Julian ports, uh, uh, the transport corridor Caspian Sea, Black Sea, and uh, the uh, so called uh, uh, energy project, uh, uh, LNG project, uh, Azerbaijan, Georgia, Romania, uh, Hungary. Uh, in, uh, uh, our uh, uh, attention is also support and assistance for the countries which share the values the Romania in, in the, its state on the EU rights and values upheld, especially for the countries which feel uh, threatening for uh, their free chosen orientation. Uh, first of all, the Republic of Moldova, uh, Georgia, and uh, Ukraine. Uh, also, like uh, our colleague, uh, there is not uh, uh, any coordination between me and uh, our colleague, the uh, uh, Bulgarian colleague here, but uh, we also uh, 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 took active part in the preparation uh, of the document for the later summit in, in Wales. And uh, the, uh, Romania is fully committed to fulfilling the decision taken by the Allied uh, the, there. Uh, for your information, uh, uh, Romanian Minister of Foreign Affairs uh, met uh, with the Secretary General Jens Totterberg in Brussels on uh, October 21st. And uh, uh, the meeting uh, was uh, uh, on good occasion to discuss the strategic uh, the meeting was a good occasion for reiterating our position and expectation in connection with the situation uh, uh, on the eastern flank uh, of NATO. Um, uh, between uh, the issues uh, which uh, were taken in the discussion with the NATO uh, Secretary General, uh, there are full and timely implementation of the decision on collective defense designed to respond to all challenges posed by Russia and uh, their strategic implications. Um, uh, we uh, again uh, welcome uh, the assurance measures and uh, we uh, insisted for the need to elaborate and make operational as soon as possible the NATO readiness action plan. Uh, uh, Romania uh, uh, will contribute actively uh, to the formation of NATO long-term reaction uh, to the security situation in the taxi region and uh, support uh, strengthening the relations uh, uh, of cooperation between NATO and its, uh, uh, its eastern partners, especially Georgia, Ukraine and the Republic of Moldova. Uh, the, uh, in our view, uh, the illegal uh, annexation of Crimea by the Russian Federation, uh, the volatile security environment, uh, the uh, Russian-Ukrainian uh, border and uh, strengthening of the Russian military capabilities in the region uh, have a disruptive uh, effect on the uh, maritime or regional cooperation in the Black Sea. Against this ground, uh, uh, one of the Romania's priorities in the Internet of World Series was to underline the strategic importance of the Black Sea. Uh, the final declaration of the NATO summit recognizes the importance of the Black Sea area for uh, Euro Atlantic uh, security and uh, underscores the fact that Russia current actions uh, are contrary to the principle of, uh, on which uh, the established competence building mechanisms in the Black Sea were built. 
The maintenance of the current security circumstances in the Black Sea brings uncertainty with regard to, to the functioning of the regional cooperation mechanisms in this area. We remind, first of all, the uh, uh, Black Sea economic cooperation and the Black Sea threat. Uh, hopefully, the Black Sea uh, synergy will continue to the 